everybody loves planting tomatoes and everybody's gearing to go. It's, it's always amazing once we start that spring warm up in April, how many people rush to plant them. And of course, then we have a frost or a freeze and then they get set back and then they have to plant again. Well, if you're one of those or if you haven't planted yet, like I haven't planted, it's now time to talk about the proper way to plant them. And I know over the years, many of us have learned that diseases can really start up very rapidly on newly planted tomatoes. And so I'm just going to talk about some tips and techniques on planting tomatoes that might help. Let's talk about setting tomatoes out. Jennifer talked about hardening them off, and it's very important to start out with hardened off tomatoes. I grow tomatoes in my own greenhouse, so I'm always in a rush, always late in the game, and I'm always in a hurry to get them out in the garden. But really what I should be doing is stepping back and thinking, okay, a week ahead of time, okay, I need to get these acclimated or hardened off. And so our target is May 1st for the majority of the state, maybe some of the northern areas that maybe after the first week of May. But May 1st is what I use in, in my area, mainly because that's when the soil is warm enough to really help with growth. We target plants that are about four to five inches tall at least. A lot of people will find taller plants this time of year. And so if they are up to eight to 10 inches tall, it's a great opportunity to sink them in the ground. What a lot of people don't realize is tomatoes will develop roots all along the stem. So if you just pull off some of those lower leaves and sink the plants up to a third to a half of the way, depending on how big the plants are, you can actually develop more roots underground just by doing that. Now, tomatoes is pretty much the only vegetable that you can get by with sinking. Most of the other vegetables, we are wanting to plant them at the same depth they were in the pot. When you go to transplant, definitely choose a cloudy day or choose an evening where you get the maximum time for allowing that plant to get situated. So plants always suffer some type of shock whether it's minor or major when we're doing transplanting. And so if we choose that cloudy day or that evening, then we can definitely minimize that shock. And think about that location that you're wanting to put it. Definitely tomatoes are full sun, which means six or eight hours or more of sun is required. And a lot of times you can plant them in a traditional gardening setting, in a container, within the landscape. Just think about, you don't always have to go traditional. There's lots of different ways. The pictures on the right, just showing you top picture that transplants ready to go. And then of course, slower picture is when they're actually planting into the garden. So big thing when we talk about tomatoes, we need to step back and think about our soil preparation. It should be loose, it should be cultivated, I know a lot of people are choosing the no-till planting method. I'm hearing more and more people choose that. So even if you do the no-till planting, you still want to cultivate that small little area so that that soil is movable and, and those roots can penetrate that soil. So just keep in mind there's some type of cultivation that needs to happen. Now, a lot of people, before they start planting, will amend the soils. Now, I know I've seen lots of different videos, lots of different guides. But the whole big takeaway on soil prep is one, prepare that soil, make sure that it's, it's worked up and that the roots can penetrate it. The other part is add a handful of compost. If you don't have compost, you can also use a high phosphorus fertilizer. The reason why we say high phosphorus is if you choose a high nitrogen fertilizer, then you will be pushing too much green growth. Phosphorus, if we choose high phosphorus, we're going after the blooming and the fruit set. Um, I also hear a lot of people say, well, you use Epsom salt. I know a lot of people have gotten in trouble in terms of soil fertility and, and uh, soil test wise. So I always try to say, if you're gonna use Epsom salts, try to get a soil test before you do any of that. Make sure you need it. Yes, Epsom salts is good, but too much can also be a hindrance to the growth. So. Just make sure if you're going to use it, use it in limited quantities or use it based on a soil test. Another issue is plant spacing. A lot of people I feel like to crowd and push uh, plant too closely. So one thing I really promote is, um, you know, if depending on the way you're going to trellis or cage, that's going to determine how far apart you're going to plant them. 
If you go with stakes, you want to go 24 to 36 inches. If you go trellis um, or cage, you want to go 36 to 48 inches. And then, of course, four to five feet between rows. And the reason why I usually say 24 to 36, 36 to 48, everybody is different how they feel on, on distance wise on how far away they're putting their plants. I'm one of these that if I go to plant tomatoes, I want to be able to work my way around the tomato instead of having to go all the way down the row and coming all the way back. So my choice, and this is not everybody's choice, is to cage them with, at a four foot spacing. Now, if you're doing more of a trellising system, you can get by with the more narrow plant spacing. The thing that you can do, so on the left picture, we're planting them deeper. The right picture, or plant B, we're planting at more of a vertical and then bending the tomato shoot up. Be careful not to break that stem. But the thought process is the more you put underneath the soil, the more roots you're going to grow. And so if you are putting the plants horizontally running along the soil and then bringing the top up, that all develops as roots. Now, I hear pros and cons by both uh, methods. And so it's, it's really up to you how you feel about that. Um, over to the right, we have Katie Kamler's pictures. The top one is actually planting them vertically or sinking the pot. The lower picture is actually she's laying them down once again, bringing that top up so it'll grow upward. Like I said, it doesn't matter which method you use. Um, it's whatever suits your situation. I, I could see if you had a shallow raised bed, you might go with more of the uh, sideways uh, planking in a trench. Um, if you had a deeper soil, then you could sink that pot. This is the gist of what I wanted to get at on proper planting. You know, I always tell the participants in my classes, this is the way you should to plant a tomato. When you start planting, you should have mulch right there ready to go. You should have your cage ready to go, and you should have a watering can. And so the process essentially goes, you dig, dug your hole, you plant your tomato, you mulch it immediately, and then you cage it. And the thought process behind that is, if you wait to mulch that, that tomato two or three days down the line, you are allowing splashing water to happen from that ground. And when water splashes up on the leaves, ultimately it's carrying soil particles. And that soil particles will have disease pathogens on it. So a great way to get um, septoria leaf spot or early blight started in a garden is not to mulch. And so definitely mulching is important. So when you're planting that tomato, definitely have that mulch ready to go, get it caged, get it all done right then and there, and then water. And mulch can be things like straw, clean hay. Clean hay is important, not just any hay, because hay, hay tends to have wheat seeds in it. So if you're gonna use hay, make sure it's clean. Any type of mulch will do. I know a lot of people go in with newspaper. A lot of people go in with cardboard. Just get that ground covered. That's, that's the main point. Have your cages or trellising ready to go. Um, there's a really big uh, push towards wiping everything down with a 10% bleach solution. And this goes back to sanitation, getting those disease spores off of anything that tomato is going to touch. When we talk about disease control, avoid any aerial or overhead irrigation. All irrigation can, should be at the ground level. Um, you're watering the soil, not over the plant. My biggest thing that I love in the garden is soaker hoses or drip irrigation. And, and mainly, once again, it's watering the soil and not the plants. Um, and then be prepared for frost if necessary. Um, over to the right, the upper picture is cages. This is my garden. Um, I don't have it in yet. Actually, this is last year's. But this is lots of straw on, caged up, ready to go. Lower picture, we had that frost um, the first week of May last year. And I was ready to go with flower pots. And all we did was flower pots right over the tops of plants. It was easy that way. Or you can use buckets. Once we're this far into the game, you've got to be creative in how you're going to cover your plants. Any fertilizer advice, I really want to point you to the MU Guide 6461. It's on planting tomatoes. And because it gives a lot of good information and it gives the information about the different fertilizers that can be used. Um, as a final slide, this just shows what I was talking about earlier on spacing and the method you use when growing tomatoes. On the left-hand side, it's the cage method. You, we have about four feet in between plants. 
Once again, I'm one of those I like to work all the way around the page. On the right, this is um, a coworkers, and they choose to do the trellising system, and therefore they can get by with the more narrow spacing. And so just keep that in mind when you're getting ready to plant your tomatoes. How far apart? What's the trellising going to look like? How am I going to get these in the ground and keep uh, disease control? 